Hey guys, well this is the last wiring video in the wiring series for the C25XP. Uh, in this video I thought I'd just do a wire by wire recap of how we connected and integrated the C25 into our current control panel. Sometimes it's easier if you just can visualize where the wire comes from and where the wire goes. So the first thing we did was brought power to the C25XP on the top two terminals here on the right side. Uh, the top terminal is 10 to 30 volts and the next terminal down is our common or ground. So we brought 24 volts to this top terminal from our tri-power power supply. The next terminal down is our common or ground and we also brought that from our tri-power power supply. So that took care of bringing power to the C25XP. After bringing power in to our C25XP, uh, the next thing we did was wired in our home sensors. Now we didn't change any of our mechanical home sensors so we're going to have some that are mechanical, some that are proximity sensors for our ATC, and then for our C home sensor, we're using an IR sensor. Before we can connect those sensors, we have to provide them with power. Now the C25 has a source power for our 10 to 30 volts. Now this is separate from our incoming power. These are, these are source voltages that we can use to go out to sensors uh, if we choose to do so. And we also have a 5 volt source power. Now, all of our sensors are going to be using 5 volts, so what we did was I transferred 5 volts from our C25XP over to a separate terminal strip here, as well as our 5 volt ground. So these three terminal blocks here and these two here are from our C25 source 5 volts. Technically, we're just basically wiring everything up to these two terminals, but you can't stick that many wires in there. So I just transferred it over to here so that I could add the different wires needed. So after landing our 5 volts here, we brought our 5 volts out to our mechanical limit switches for our X, Y, and Z home. And then on the return side, the signal, we landed here on port 2, pin 10. For X, 11 for Y, 12 for Z, and we also brought in our C25 ground. We also tied it into our COM2 here. The C25 XP input ports 1 and 2, you can use any voltage to bring in there, but you have to tie in the common to that same source voltage. In this case, we're using our five volts. After we wired in our home sensors, the next thing we did was we brought in our ATC D sub connector. This is all of our wiring for the ATC, which is our ATC retract, extend, and our C home sensor. So for our extend, retract, and C home sensor, we had to provide that with the same 5 volts. So we brought 5 volts from our C25 XP terminals here. It goes out to our pigtail harness here for our D sub connector. We also brought our ground. So we brought power out on our D sub from our C25 terminal strip here and we brought also brought our zero volts or our ground on these terminals. We then brought in we connected our ATC retract, extend and C home. These are inputs that go back to the C25 XP and we landed them on input port 2. Our C home is pin 15 our extend and retract extend is port 2 pin 2 and retract is pin 3 the next thing we needed to do was 
wire in our slide relay. This is mislabeled here, sorry about that. That's really the slide relay, not the power drawbar relay. Our slide relay here, we connected from our pigtail going to our D sub connector over to our slide relay contacts which is our first relay over here so this is our normally open wire right here the very first terminal we connected it there and then we also had to supply power to the slide relay that is our center terminal this power comes from our tri-power power supply 24 volt terminal here while bringing power over here I also know that I needed power for our second relay which is going to be our power drawbar relay so I brought and jumpered that power from there to there I also added a pigtail here in case I want to jump the power again over to the next relay just in case in the future I decide to add an air blast or move the flood coolant over here um, currently I'm using this for the stack light but uh, I do have an extra relay here on this bank that I'm not using so now that we've supplied power to the relay and from the relay up to the D sub connector we also have to supply the common side of the uh, relay solenoid and that comes out the pigtail here and goes over to our tri-power ground. That's this yellow wire here. So that wraps up our D sub connector harness and wiring in our C home sensor, our ATC sensors, and our mechanical home sensors. Uh, next we need to wire in our low air pressure sensor and our foot switch and also we're going to be wiring in our power draw bar solenoid those all came in on the same harness we brought power out to our low air pressure and tied it into our foot switch and that power comes from our C25 XP terminal and it feeds both of those switches on the other side of those mechanical switches we brought them into the C25 XP pin 4 for the low air pressure port 2 and pin 5 for the foot switch for the power draw bar this is to activate an input so that we can mechanically uh, manually change a tool should we need to the next thing on that harness was our power draw bar solenoid which comes back to our relay so if you recall we had already brought in our 24 volts to the second relay here for our power draw bar solenoid that came originally from the 24 volt tri-power power supply and we just jumped it over and then on the normally open side of the contacts we sent power out through that harness to our power draw bar solenoid on the other side of that solenoid was our return and it came back to our uh, tri-power common uh, next up in the sequence we wired in our stack light so the last thing we did was wire up our power draw bar relay we wired up our slide relay and our power draw bar relay we brought power over voltage in here to our relays and then on the normally open side we sent power out to the solenoids and we wired the return back to our source tri-power power supply in this it's drawn here on the C25 XP source voltage but if you recall that's electrically the same as our tri-power power supply so we're landing everything back on our terminal strips here next up we need to wire in our red amber and green stack lights those also get 24 volts tied together to provide power to one side of the lamp that also goes back to our tri power power supply 24 volts now the stack lights work a little bit different 
we're going to be switching the ground side or the common side. So we brought our tri-power 24 volt common to our voltage in for each of the relays. And that is the center terminal here. You can see that we have it coming into the third relay here and then jumpered over with this black wire to the next two relays. That is our voltage in, but in this case it's our common. And then we just tied in the normally open side to the other side of each lamp. And we have our red, amber, and our green. Now the M26 is not going to work unless we provide power to the board. We brought power in from our 5 volt tri-power power supply here and that's going separately to our M26 and then this is our tri-power common going back to our tri-power ground. Now the M26 needs to be enabled and what I did was I just added a jumper wire here so we have 5 volts coming out of the board and we just turned around and sent it right back to the enable pin. That will enable the pin as long as it has power on it. So next we need to wire in our servo motors. Now the servo motors are wired slightly different than they were originally with the C11GS. The C25XP we're going to be tying together our ground, our negative signal terminals, which is terminal 6 and 7. That's our brown and yellow wire. And we're going to bring those up and put them on the ground terminal. Our step terminal is terminal 2. And that is our black wire. And our black wire is going to go up to terminal output port 1, pin 2 for our black wire and our white wire is our direction and that is going to be pin 3. So we have black, white, yellow and brown tied together. That's for our X axis. Our Y axis will be 4, 5 and ground. Again black, white and yellow and brown tied together. Our Y will be 6, 7 and ground. Again, black, white, yellow, and brown tied together. And then we reserved 8, 9 and ground for our A axis. And then our C axis, which will be our ATC carousel, will be 1, 17 and ground. Uh, 17 here is not our safety charge pump. These are all axes terminals on output 1. Pin 1 will be our step, 17 will be our direction, and again ground here will be yellow and brown tied together. I decided to go ahead and just change out the stepper motor I originally had for the ATC and go ahead and go with the clear pass servo. Uh, the number one reason was I just didn't have room for an additional power supply for just that one closed loop stepper. It was just so much easier just to spend the extra money and add the clear pass servo. However, if you're not using clear pass servos and you're using some other, the closed loop stepper is fine for the ATC. Alright, so next we need to wire in our spindle relays. We have uh, three relays here on the C25XP. Relay 3 is going to be our enable relay. So once the safety charge pump is enabled, which you enable this by selecting jumper 3, 2. So up top here, this is our top jumper. On the right hand side we have it on pins 2 and 3. And then the next one down is setting up this relay number 3 for pin, port 2, pin 17, which is our safety charge pump. We also have our VFD set up for USA mode. From our VFD, we have our red wire here. This is on B2 for this particular VFD. 
This is uh, sending 24 volts out. This is for all of our internal VFD uh, switches. Forward, reverse, enable. This is the supply power. So this will go from the VFD. It's going to go over to relay number 3 on the voltage in terminal, which is the center terminal right here. Uh, we then jumped it over to relay number 2 and relay number 1. Next, we have our enable wire here. This is uh, the blue wire. It also jumps over to B7, and B7 just tells it that we're using an external voltage source for our speed. Uh, your particular VFD may be different, so check the documentation. Uh, this is currently not the way that I had it set up when I was using the C11GS, so this is a change. But we're bringing this blue wire over to relay number 3, on our normally open contacts. So once relay 3 is closed with the safety charge pump and the boards enabled, it will enable the VFD to be controlled. That's basically what that circuit does there. Uh, next we have our clockwise or forward which is B5 on this particular VFD which is the white wire and then that's going to go over to relay number one on the normally open terminal and then our reverse which is B6 the black wire will go to our relay number two on the normally open terminal and then we just need to bring in our 0 to 10 volt signal so our 0 to 10 volt signal is going to be from this yellow wire here on the 0 to 10 volt positive and that's going to go up to our yellow wire comes up here to T2, which is also A1, and then our common 0 volts is T1, which is this green wire, and it's going to go back to the output negative on the 0 to 10 volts. We're probably going to have to come back and adjust this potentiometer here to get our voltage right for our speed uh, once we have everything powered up and running. So that pretty much takes care of all the wiring. It was a lot simpler telling you about it just then than it was when I was wiring it up. Uh, one last thing we need to do is just put on our port 3 ribbon cable. And uh, it's just a 25 pin ribbon cable. And we're going to just plug that in to the port 3 here. I can see. Okay, and plug it into our M26 right here. And now we have that all ready to go. Well, all right, guys, that recaps our wiring. Uh, in the next video, we're going to talk about setting up the Ethernet Smooth Stepper with Mach 3. We're going to power it up, make sure everything's moving, and then we're going to start working on getting the ATC functioning. Guys, if you're new to my channel and you're just tuning in, click on the subscribe button down here below when I post a new video. If it's something you're interested in, you can stop by and check it out. As always, guys, please feel free to ask questions, make suggestions, or leave comments. There's a lot of information in these wiring videos. If I failed to uh, mention anything, then um, please let me know, and I'll try to address it in a future video. Thanks for watching, guys. Please subscribe. Thumbs up if you like the video. Most importantly, be safe.